we are taking on the Malaysian classic Chakri Chow. It's fast, it's furious, it is absolutely delicious. You're gonna see how I got from that classic to this healthier version, doctor's kitchen style. You're gonna love this one. I've been a doctor for over 15 years and patients always ask me for healthier versions of recipes that they love. And I treated patients from across the world. So I decided to come to the culinary capital of Malaysia, here, Penang, a melting pot of different cuisines and cultures from Indian, Sri Lankan, Chinese, and of course, non yun cooking. We're gonna try some of the most authentic dishes from the best vendors and then create inspired dishes right here in our studio kitchen with a healthier twist. Welcome to Healthy Travels with me, Dr. Rupi in Penang. We visited our resident Penang food guide, Mr. Clement, to tell us all about the history of this delicious dish. Chakwe Tiao, am I pronouncing that right? Yeah, Chakwe Tiao is a Chinese uh, food, but you won't find it in China. Okay. Chakwe Tiao means fried Kwe Tiao noodle. Okay. Kwe Tiao noodle is kind of flat noodle. It's uh, very hard to prepare this dish. It looks simple, but the secret is always the fire. You have to have very strong fire and you throw all the ingredients one by one at the right timing. Fry it in a very short period of time and it get a bit burnt, caramelized. So a bit of crunchy and scotch taste, a bit of sweetness. I don't know how to prepare. <laughs> I love it very much from young and I always stand at the next to this chef and it's prepared so fast and that's, wow, man, I would do it at home. But I always feel at home. <laughs> Hawkers have spent years perfecting that technique of the yes, charring of the noodles. It's not for beginners. Okay. <laughs> for me, I tried my whole life. I'm still not a okay. Okay. <laughs> We're going to do char kiu chow today. I've been told it's impossible to make healthy. I'm going to try it first. This is one of the best places to try it. And then I'm going to try and conjure up an idea of how to make this quite unhealthy dish healthier, at least. Chao Kiu Chao. Yes. I know it's not healthy. Yes. <laughs> Tell us about what, what goes into it, how, how you make it. Kui Tiao is the noodle. Okay. Cha Kui Tiao means Chao Kiu Chao. Fried Kui Tiao. We have the prawn, seaweed, fish cake, soy sauce. They mix yeah. together with the sugar, fish oil. Okay. All inside put together. And you just mix it together and you just fry it? Yes. Like two, three minutes? One plate of the Chao Kiu Chao. I did less than one minute. Okay, less okay right. Less than one minute. Yeah. Okay, cool. <laughs> Oh wow. Okay, here you are. Oh wow. Uh, but one more thing I forgot. Deep fry with two types of egg. Either okay. you want chicken egg or you want duck egg. You enjoy. Amazing. Okay. Thank you. Appreciate yeah. it. Cheers. Thank you. Thank okay. you. It's out of this world. Mm. It's kind of like um, a pad thai, but like fried more so. It's got beautiful flavors. It's not too salty, actually. It's pretty delicious. It's definitely not healthy. It's all about the wok. It's all about the movement. It's all about that technique. Adding that oil and getting the char on the noodles as well. I'm getting all those little like caramelized fry bits here as well. It's freaking awesome. But this is gonna be a challenge to make healthy. You gotta try this. You gonna try some? <laughs> so chendol is a dessert dish that loads of people told me to try. Basically it's shaved ice with red bean which is sweet and then they have this like green vermicelli style kind of noodle around it again that's sweet and everything has got condensed coconut milk on top of it. This one is one of the most popular stores. We're gonna go try it out. I definitely won't be able to make this healthy, so I'm not gonna bother. I'm just gonna enjoy it, but it's definitely one of the things that I've been told to try at least. Oh wow, that's very fast. <laughs> you have to stir. Stir, you stir yeah. before you eat it. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Cheers. All right. I actually like red beans in desserts and these green rice flour noodles. Bloody hell. 
That's amazing. Fresh coconut milk as well. That's something else. Wow, it's refreshing. The beaniness doesn't come through. It doesn't taste savory. It tastes sweet. Anyway, we'll just go back to um, the healthy eating. Char Kui Chow is one of the most popular dishes in Penang. It's not the healthiest dish. There's tons of oil. There's a bunch of duck eggs in. They've started using duck eggs because of the rich of it. Actually, how many duck eggs are there, Charlie? There's four. There's four, There's four duck eggs per serving. A little bit high on the duck eggs. That's all I'm saying. No judgment. It's got this wonderful velvety, dark, soy, sticky sauce. It's an amazing dish. I'm going to make my nod or wink to the charcoal chow that is slightly healthier, got a lot more veg in, a lot more fiber, a lot more diversity, still has the same sauce. The secret to the charcoal chow is actually the heat of the wok. And they literally have a steel wok and they just bang in all their different ingredients, making it look effortless. This is the first time I'm making a charcoal chow. We're gonna start off with a little whip around the ingredients. I'm using king oyster mushrooms. I do like using prawns, but I thought we'll make this one veggie today. Slightly veggie, it's got fish sauce in, but there's loads of alternatives for that. Puffed tofu balls. These are really popular. Marinated tofu or tempeh would work really well for protein. I've got the charcoal chow noodles. I would use flat brown rice noodles. Nearly impossible to get in Penang here, so I'm gonna use the actual official kui chow noodles. I'm using kai lan. Kailan is a wonderful brassica ingredient, very popular in Chinese cuisine. It's sort of like tender stem meets a Swiss chard. And we're gonna use the stems and the leaves separately because the stems will take a little bit longer to cook. I've got some green beans here. You could also use peas or broad beans, just chop them up. Some bean sprouts that they typically use in their dish. And then I'm gonna garnish with a chili and spring onion. And the sauce I'm gonna make is with ketchup manis, which is a sweet, sticky, very sugary, a sauce that gives a wonderful depth of flavor. You could also use something like an oyster sauce, maybe even a hoisin sauce could work. A little touch of sesame oil, that's not traditional, and a bit of fish sauce. You could also use mushroom sauce if you want to keep it completely vegetarian. This is the first time I'm doing it. It could go horribly wrong. It could go right, who knows? Either way, I'm gonna show you guys. We're gonna start off by cubing the mushrooms here. The way I like to use mushrooms in dishes is I'll dry cook these in the pan to get rid of the water that's naturally in these bad boys. King oyster mushrooms, they'll give you a little bit of protein. They're gonna reduce in size a lot. It looks like I'm using a lot for just one person, but they are gonna reduce in size. So that's our mushies done. Now with the garlic, I've been waiting to use this. This is an epic looking pestle and mortar. There's probably another name for it that I haven't figured out, but this has got a smooth surface and we're just gonna bash it. And then I'm gonna put some salt on it just to add a little bit more friction to the base of this pestle and mortar. I'm gonna have a little garlic puree that's gonna go in with our mushrooms. To stir fry, they tend to use a lot of vegetable oil, um, which is great for deep frying. I tend to not do very high heat frying myself, uh, but when I do, I'll use a light olive oil. It doesn't have to be anything fancy because the fats are gonna get destroyed anyway. It's not particularly healthy, but you know what? We're making stir fried noodles, so it's all good. I love this thing. I wanna take this home. That's our garlic. Green beans. I'm gonna finely chop them because these are raw. Oh man, this is really blunt. I'm struggling here, guys. Finely chop these as much as I can. I've got a massive cleaver as well. Do you reckon I should try that? It's not bad. I can see why Chingy uh, uses it on Sase Kitchen. She makes amazing wok fried dishes. She'd be horrified to see me using a non stick pan and trying to make a charcoal chow. Sorry, Chingy. There's no other way. So that's our green beans. Kailan, one of my favorite ingredients. You can get these in Asian supermarkets. If you can't find this, you know what? Asparagus would, would work very well. You could use tender stem broccoli. You could actually use Swiss chard. I'm gonna use some of the woody uh, stems here as those will give a nice little body and texture. I'm feeling a bit nervous about doing this uh, charcoal chow. Mr. Clement, he did uh, scare me, but he was like, it's very hard to do. It looks easy, very hard to do. I will show you an honest attempt. A lot of people throw away their stems of broccoli, the, even the woody bits of the asparagus. You can use these guys, because there's more fiber in there, there's more flavor in there. So for this, a nice little technique of making sure that your leaves uh, are nicely cooked quickly. Instead of throwing them in like this, and you'll just get big clumps, and they might not all cook at the same time, you just flatten out the leaves and just roll them into 
a big cigar and then you just roll your knife along and it just means everything comes together nicely and it wilts. I want this to really go through all the noodles rather than it be separate. Just a quick one, if you're enjoying these recipes from Healthy Travels with Dr. Rupee, then check out the link down below in the captions where I give you all recipes from this series and an easy downloadable PDF. Just click the link down below, follow the instructions and we'll send the recipes to you. Back to the show. And then I'm just going to uh, make a little garnish with some chili. They tend to use garlic chives, but I couldn't get garlic chives. So we're just going to use a touch of chili and some spring onions. Got my bean sprouts. Oh, I'm going to make the sauce, the charcoal chow sauce. So there's variations that I've seen people make of this. Generally, when you go to the stores, they tend to already have it made up. So you don't really see what goes into it. And I reckon everyone's got their own sort of version of this. And you can see this kick up manis is barely coming out of the bottle here. It's really sticky, sweet. It's got tamarindy flavor. Definitely got sugar in, but you know, we're not scared of sugar. We're just scared of excess sugar. We've got some soy sauce. So I'm using a light soy sauce, some fish sauce. Stand back. <laughs> a teaspoon is all you need. This is strong stuff. You could also use mushroom sauce or vegetarian fish sauce as well. A touch of sesame oil. Again, that's not typical, but I like to use just a little bit of oil just to give it a bit of body. I'm gonna mix that all together. Give it a quick try. That's perfect. So I'm gonna bring all this together. The secret to a good stir fry is actually having all your ingredients ready to go. Mise en place, everything in its place. So I've got everything together. We're gonna to move over to the hob and then we're gonna try and make my very first nod, wink to char kui chow, the doctor's kitchen kui chow. So we start off with popping in the mushrooms to a really hot, dry pan. Fry them off until they're a bit brown on the outside. Oh, wow. That's very fast, actually. <laughs> this is proper hot. Then add a drop of oil just to fry it a little bit more so. Then you go in with your bean sprouts, add your green beans and your kailan stems. Toss those together until they're nice and cooked. It takes around two to three minutes. You go in with that garlic puree that we've made. Those beautiful wide rice noodles. Toss those together and then you add your sauce. Pop to one side, add another drop of olive oil, crack in your egg, mix on that one side, then bring all together. Then we're gonna throw in the rest of our ingredients. Kailan chopped leaves, the tofu balls, toss all together for another minute or so, and then serve straight away. Yew, that was fast. Look at those noodles. This smells incredible. Straight off the wok, slash an on-stick pan. We're gonna garnish it, a little bit of spring onion. They use garlic chives, garlic chives would be wonderful in this. Little bit of chili. Who said healthy food had to be boring? You gotta try this. I'm really impressed with myself. Never done this sort of thing before. I thought it was gonna be a complete mess. It's turned out to be bloody awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Chakwe chow, the original, doesn't have many vegetables in. It's got some bean sprouts, but that's pretty much in, and a bit of garlic chives. This, you've got stems of the kailan, you've got the leaves of the kailan, all that fiber. You've got green beans in there. A really good source of protein. You use one egg instead of four. We're using tofu here, and the base of this is mushrooms. It's gonna give a lovely texture to the dish. You could use prawns as well, just fry off the prawns before, put them to one side and then add them right at the end as they would do in a traditional charcuterie chow. But this, honestly, this is stunning. It smells amazing. I'm gonna grab some chopsticks and dive into this. Do we have chopsticks? My very first Doctor's Kitchen Kui Chow. Oh my God. No words. Mmm, this is so good. The original chakri chow is like, it's really, you can tell it's definitely fatty. This is much less fatty. It has rich flavors. That sweetness from the ketchup manis really comes through. If I was being harsh on myself, I'd say a little bit more soy sauce. It needs a little bit more saltiness. Mmm, this is phenomenal. Beautiful kailan, freshness of those leaves. This is epic. This is epic healthy food. I mean, it's healthier for sure. This is a really good dish. I'm telling you, like, if you like char kui chow and you want a healthier nod 
wink to the flat rice noodle dish. Doctor's Kitchen style with tons of veggies. This is the one to go for. You're gonna freaking love this. Honestly, give this one a try. I'm gonna finish this outside. Oh yeah, so good. If you love that recipe, you will love this recipe. It's a traditional non-union dish called Capitan Chicken and it's a curry and I've also did another dish to complement it. Check it out right here.